Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to tonight's committee, planning committee on Tuesday, the 8th of October. I'd like to welcome all committee members, those in the public gallery, those speaking tonight, and also those watching at home. I'd like to remind all members that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube later. Uh, going on to apologies, I've received apologies from both councillors Rosie Claymore and Richard Kingston. Are there any more apologies? Nope. Going on to item number two, minutes of the last meeting held on 3rd of October 2024 are here for approval. Can I request a mover and a seconder? Councillor Smith and a seconder please. Councillor Pallet. All those in favour? Unanimous. Unanimous, thank you very much. Moving on to item number three, declarations of interest. Before there are any declarations of interest, I'd like to read out the following statement. I confirm that under section 33.2 of the Localism Act 2011, the Act permits an authority to grant a dispensation from either or both of the restrictions not to participate and or vote on a matter in which they have a pecuniary interest. Planning Committee members have received a further dispensation for applications relating to the future High Street project for a period of two years starting from the 5th of August 2024 until the 5th of August 2026. Having said that, are there any declarations of interest on any of the applications this evening? No. Okay then. Item 4A, applications for consideration. Update information on application number... 5061-2018 land to the east of former Tamworth Golf Course site north of Tamworth B5000 and west of the M42. I'd like to hand over to Glenn Baker Adams to present his report. Thank you Chair. Yep, as discussed this application, I'm uh, sorry, I described it off Roby's Lane, but yeah, the site address is correct. Um, so this application, we may remember back in July, I briefed members that this application was being determined mainly by North Warwickshire District Council. And they have most of the site within their boundary. Um, the plan here hopefully shows that. Um, yeah, so the red line is basically all the area at the south of the site within North Warwickshire, and the blue line is the area within Tamworth. The site itself, I hope you're familiar with the site. So to the west of the um, site is the um, current uh, application with um, Red Row Homes, building out the golf course um, development. Um, currently, obviously, well underway with that. You can see some of the elements that are still being built out. Got Robies Lane to the east, and then the countryside further along, and then the country park there, and then the M42. To the north, you've got the marina and the... Um, the way went on at the top, and then residential of the, uh, Tamworth to the south of the site. So hopefully members have seen the appendix went with this application. This is the report that uh, North Warwickshire sent to their members, also recommending approval for the application, which was subsequently um, approved by members on that on that night. The application itself um, splits the site into two mainly, where you've got the uh, residential to the north of the site, and then the south is more the commercial units. So you've got a community hub, which will contain various um, business units, the primary school, uh, some um, extra care facility down here, sports pitches, and yeah, more residential uh, down at the bottom. Just as a quick update, um, to satisfy highway comments and to provide a comprehensive, uh, basically access onto the site, an additional condition will be in Post. This condition is here, obviously it's a bit wordy, but in effect this will just give us authority to ask for more information about the access to be provided, which will obviously be looked at by both Warwickshire County Council and uh, Staffordshire County Council's highways engineers to view as acceptable. But yeah, hopefully you've seen the report by North Warwickshire members that the application has been recommended for approval by them. The small element of site within our area, as I say down here, is probably highway works. Which, yeah, which Agwin will come forward as part of a future application. But the application has been deemed to be accepted by North Warwickshire members, and therefore, as an officer for Tamworth Borough Council, a very small element of the site within our area is acceptable. It's obviously a legitimate access onto the site, and we have no ob objections to that. So that's why recommendation is for approval for that very element of the scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much, Glenn. I'd like to introduce our speaker this evening, Mr. Mark Bassett. I will begin when you're ready. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, just to say, I've got a flashing battery sign on this, so I don't know whether it's going to cut out at some point, but we'll oh, see how we get along. Uh, good evening. My name is Mark Bassett. I'm the agent for the applicant Hallam Land Management. As set out in the committee report, this is a cross-boundary application with the vast majority of the site within North Warwickshire. The scheme has received a resolution to grant permission from North Warwickshire. The site is a key strategic allocation in the North Warwickshire local plan. It is critical to deliver North Warwickshire's housing requirement, which includes accommodating 913 dwellings of Tamworth's unmet housing need. The extent of the site that sits within Tamworth's boundary is limited to the areas of highway works to facilitate access, as identified in the extract in the committee report with a blue line. As such, I will concentrate on highway and infrastructure matters. The original scheme received no objection in 2020 from Warwickshire County Council, Staffordshire County Council and National Highways. The transport assessment tested the original scheme on 1,700 dwellings, even though the limit of the original application was 1,540. Following a revision to the plans in 2024 to address issues of the strategic gap, the number of dwellings proposed is reduced to 1,370. An addendum to the transport assessment was produced. The original TA predicted an 8% increase in traffic flows on the local highway network between 2016 and 2026. Actual flows decreased by 3% between 2016 and 2023. A reduction in the quantum of development, equating to 19% reduction per day in traffic movements, coupled with a lower future background traffic flow, resulted in the addendum TA concluding that the traffic impacts of the scheme remain acceptable. Staffordshire County Council, Warwickshire County Council and National Highways agree with this position. Despite the reduction in both quantum of development and background traffic levels, the mitigation package remains as originally proposed and includes various junction improvements within Tamworth. As the committee report details, this scheme delivers infrastructure. The Section 106 package is comprehensive. The scheme includes a two-form primary school and education contribution of almost 19 million has been calculated based on Staffordshire pupil yields. The healthcare contribution, 1.4 million, has been derived in discussions between Coventry and Warwickshire and Staffordshire and Stoke integrated care boards. There is potential for on-site health provision in the community hub. The scheme provides 34 hectares of green infrastructure and will provide pedestrian and cycle links to allow per permeability into the adjacent residential development nearing completion at the former Tamworth Golf Course. The green infrastructure includes sports pitches and facilities to the south of the scheme and will, boast, um, will boost local playing pitch provision. In summary, the site is a key strategic allocation in the existing North Warwickshire local plan, which has received the approval of North Warwickshire, subject to the completion of the Section 106. It will assist in meeting Tamworth's unmet housing need. All of the infrastructure and mitigation will be secured by Section 106 and conditions. There are significant challenges ahead in respect of housing requirements, with both authorities potentially having a large uplift in requirements should the new MPPF be adopted as proposed. Delivering sites which are allocated in existing plans is therefore critical to meeting this challenge. Although you're only taking a decision on the element of the scheme within your boundary, we trust you will support us and North Warwickshire in approving this scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Bassett. If you'd be so comfortable, would you be... Happy to answer any questions the committee members have? Yeah, that's fine. I have got our transport consultant as well in case there's any particular highway comments. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Step forward, Dave. Okay, then. Thank you for that. Obviously, we'll go into questions now. Does anyone want to start us off? Councillor Smith. Just a query on the junction. Um, it was noted that if there were other designs submitted um, in the report, where would those come from, just to clarify? Well, the applicant will have to put forward, you know, the proposal for the access. Access will obviously, before that, would have probably thought we could come up with a design that would be obviously looked at by various officers and consultants, and then that will go to the transport um, officers at both Staffordshire and Warwickshire County Council for their approval. I, I can probably add to that if, if that would be helpful. Um, so, um, the scheme for uh, the Roby Lane, Roby's Lane access um, was deemed acceptable by all three highway authorities. Um, but late, quite late on in the discussions, it was identified that a non-signalised option could potentially work better. So we have said to the council, we'd like to leave that on the table as a possibility, um, and that is therefore covered as a condition. So if we, if we want to go to the non-signalised option, then um, what we would have to do is submit details under that condition, which will actually include further modelling work to, to show that that works better than what, we've, what, what we're otherwise proposing. So it's just to, to make sure that we maximise maximize all options, really. Councillor Turner, please. 
Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> yes, uh, my question is a little bit about the, the traffic actually um, being cancelled for Stony Dale. Um, you said that there's a 9% uplift potentially in your, your findings of extra traffic. <clears throat> Will that be going down the B5000 to the M42 junction? And if so, what have you uh, got pl planned? Because 9% doesn't seem a lot. So, yes, sorry, um, I'm not sure where the 9% had come from. Um, I think Mark referred to the development proposals previously being assessed with 1,700 dwellings. That's now reduced to 1,370, and it was a 19% reduction in what was previously assessed. Um, and that, yeah, so that assessment was done previously on the 1,700, whilst the development put forward was only 1,540. Um, that was just provided, provided a bit of comfort should those numbers of increase throughout the planning process, there was always assessed a, a slightly larger figure. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, but obviously, I'm concerned that that B5000 is busy anyway, and there are several schools down there, and we're going to put 1,500 houses, and there's going to be a lot of cars moving around in rush hour and non-rush hour. Uh, are we aware of you know the risks and how to mitigate that? Yes, so we're Which has included uh, some uh, some works at the, uh, the two roundabouts uh, closest to the site. So there's uh, some minor works to the, the Pennine Way, Sandy Way roundabout. Um, some minor so curb, curb realignment to increase the flare length to get traffic through the junction quicker. So you're speeding it up? We're getting traffic through uh, quicker. Faster. Yes. Okay. Not, yeah. Yes. Sorry, the second roundabout is the Mercian Way roundabout as well. And if to get traffic through there quicker. Yes, not above the speed limit. <laughs> to reduce delays. Councillor Turner, was that a question? Sorry, I'll just have to keep yeah, yeah, it. Sorry. I was just concerned that if you're speeding the traffic up, it's a 30 mile an hour limit down the B5000. How, how does that marry up? So to speed the traffic up was to reduce the delays. So any should there be any delays at the junction? So let's say there was a 10 second delay to drivers at the junction. If that delay was reduced to eight seconds, traffic would be getting through the junction quicker. Right, yeah. So you're trying to move yes. the bottleneck. We're trying to reduce the length of the queues to mitigate the development. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Councillor Clark, please. Thank you, Chair. Margaret Clark, Stony Hill Council also. Thank you. The Highways Department seemed to be concerned about safer routes to schools, which has not been considered, and also with regard to Birch Coppice. Um, at the moment, you can, you can only use your car to get there. Cycling is in, indeed quite difficult. Uh, the one route at the moment is to have to cycle through Stony Dove. It's the Stonies of area of Tamworth. Um, there was consideration to be asked for with regard to the bridleway to Birchmoor, which would make a safer route for cyclists and more people, since obviously greater employment um, appeal may well ensue at Birch Coppice, particularly with this, this particular development from North Warwickshire. Are safer routes to schools being considered now, and is there any consideration for cycling and to make a safer shorter route yeah okay so in terms of safer routes to school um, I think the first thing to say is that the scheme will deliver a primary school in, within the site so it's entirely within our gift and the detailed reserve matters to ensure that, that is, there are safe walking routes to school so that hopefully will be a comparatively easy task to deliver so that will absolutely happen for primary school children secondary school um, it, the intention is that secondary school children will go to Polesworth um, the in terms of walking routes it's quite a distance to walk to Polesworth particularly if you imagine if you're starting off in the northern part of the site so we're envisaging that secondary school children will go by bus say school bus so um, the county Warwickshire County Council identified a whole host of section 106 uh, contributions we've agreed most of them but we think a couple of them aren't still compliant so 
um, including the Birchmore uh, one, because um, there's no causal link between our site and the and the um, employment site down at Junction 10, uh, and it would be sort of disproportionate of, of for us to, 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 to sort of contribute to a whole new route down to that to that area. So whilst we've accepted the vast majority of Section 106 requests, we don't think they're still compliant, and, and North Warwickshire agreed with us on that. Councillor Turner. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, regarding schooling, uh, I was at, at the, uh, the North Warwickshire County, and one thing that um, I heard loud and clear was that both Polesworth High School and the grammar school in Atherston was over capacity now. So you've just stated that you expect the, 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 the children to go, or the youngsters, to go from there to Polesworth. It's Sorry, all... Councillor Turner, could we keep the questions to dealing with what our, we're dealing with, which is the highways matter, if, that, if that's okay? It, yeah, sure. That, well, you could be around to that, but if yeah. you're going to put them on buzzes, surely you've got more congestion. Yeah, I mean, as I say, secondary school um, children are envisaged to go to Polesworth. There are a couple of options and in, in how that, that is going to um, manifest itself. Uh, again, it, it, is, it is a Warwickshire County Council issue, but they are looking at, they're doing a feasibility for extending the Polesworth school, also providing a new school. So there's feasibility, but our contribution is there. I think it's something in the order of 6.6 .6 million towards secondary school children, uh, secondary school places. And as I say, um, public transport or bus, uh, school buses will, will transport children to, to secondary schools. Any other questions? No? Would anyone like to speak on the matter? Okay, right. In that case, then, if everyone's finished their questions and no one wants to speak, um, the recommendation is that the committee grant planning permission subject to the conditions outlined in the report. I'm looking for a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Adams to move and Councillor Smith to second. All those in favour? Can we show hands, please? All those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? That has been carried. I'd like to thank the speakers for their attendance and their contribution this evening and have a nice evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be moving on to uh, Item 4B, application 0032-2023, St Editha Square, Church Street, Tamworth, B797 DA. I'd like to hand over once again to Glenn Baker Adams to present his report, please. Thank you, Chair. Yep, yeah, this application is part of the Future High Street uh, developments. Um, hopefully we're familiar where we are. So this area here is obviously the site. To the north, you've got the church itself and obviously the various commercial units within our town centre. The development is obviously a landscape-led one in which that there will be elements of paving, tree planting, and also some cycle hoops, benches, and some barns installed as well. Obviously, the idea of this application is to revitalise the area and make it attractive for our market traders and people to visit. Obviously, the cycle hoops as well will encourage them some sustainable transport. Material design will be, well, sorry, the materials used in the um, final submission uh, will be asked for as a condition, so we'll be able to obviously iron out the various materials palette that will be used. But relatively, obviously, fresh ideas to a brighten up area of the site, um, and hopefully um, my colleague will be able to give you more information about the actual precise details. But, uh, yeah, an application that we warrant, and we seem to be a benefit to the town centre. So our application is recommended for approval. Thank you very much, Glenn. Obviously, before I open up to questions from other members, um, I'd like to ask a question myself when it comes. Oh, it's a presentation. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to hand over to Alice then to present a presentation first. Thank you. Yeah, just to give a bit of additional context on the back of what Glenn has said, this is part of the Wider Future High Street Fund programme. The landscaping that is proposed will complement the rest of the schemes in the town centre. There will be cohesiveness between the other landscaping elements with the idea of one feature high street fund outputs being drawing people through the town centre um, and creating cohesive links between our heritage assets. Um, we've already mentioned obviously that the square 
is designed in the way that it can be used as a, a sort of reflective civic square sort of space for the public. Also, obviously, we've got some enhanced sort of power requirements going in for the market and also hopefully for use as an event space in future. Um, I won't go too much into the consultations because that's detailed in the report, but just to highlight that we've had um, a road safety audit just so that we can be assured that obviously it's safe for any uh, road users that might be going on and off the square in terms of events and markets vehicles as well as any pedestrians, um, obviously with us being mindful of the fact that the college will also be on the square. Um, also, given its proximity to uh, St Edith's uh, Square, sorry, to St Edith's Church even, um, we've had input from the conservation officer on this as well. So in broad terms, what we're trying to do, we're looking to make the space more accessible. We're looking to make it more of a destination, a focal point for the heritage assets and a destination space for the new uh, South Staffordshire College. Um, we're looking to soften what is existing in the existing state, quite a harsh landscaped area, um, add capability to make the square more of an event space and obviously ensure market operations can continue as planned. Um, how are we going to do it? We're looking at evening out the terrain, making the square more level and removing the sort of different levels and steps that we've got at the moment to make it more accessible for users. Um, we're looking to declutter and make the space more usable, like say for events and market uh, traders, whilst also looking to implement improvements to planting to sort of soften the space, you know, adding in cycle hoops for, um, you know, in terms of people that want to park the bikes there and also adding in new seating that's much needed in the square. We're replacing bollards to curb parking issues and also allow safe access on and off the square for permitted vehicles only. Um, we're also putting in some lighting improvements um, with the hope of the square feeling a little bit more safer in the evenings as well. New power feeders, like I say, to help with that market and events use uh, also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alice. Um, as I stated before, before I open up to other members to ask questions, um, as all members of the committee know, and also councillors and the members of the public, St. Heather's Square has a problem with people parking on it during the night time. Um, are there any plans in place to reduce that or completely eliminate that in the future? I can't talk in, in terms of obviously enforcement, but I know as part of the plans, like I say, we're looking at replacing and putting in demountable bollards. So the idea being the only people that can remove those bollards are market traders or people that we've given permission to use the event space to hopefully curb that problem we've got at the moment where people just drive on and park there. The idea with market traders, like I say, is that they can drive on if they have a trailer that they use, for example, the Spudman, if it's more just set up, the idea is they set up and then move off the space and go to their normal parking allocated space. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Councillor Smith. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I've got a couple. The first one's a sort of a question, maybe just a bit of an acknowledgement, really. Um, on the slide that you've got actually on the TV screen there, to the right of that, you've actually got a, a key. Um, on the on the one that I'm looking at at the moment, the um, the information key uh, is slightly blurred, so it needs to be high resolution, and that information is quite fascinating actually, and I could uh, I'd really like to be able to read that information. So for next time, if there is anything like this, it'd be great if it could be in a better resolution and not blurred. That's the first one. Shall I go to my next one? <laughs> um, so that whole area i mean obviously there's certain elements of that area that we can't control and it's a bit of an naughty question because it kind of falls outside of the the kind of specifics which you might shout at me for um but if i can um there's because there's 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 parts to that area that aren't particularly they're a bit shabby let's be honest so will there be a bit of a motivating factor uh, maybe through this process or afterwards to try and encourage maybe other areas where we don't have direct control to kind of um you know increase the standards the visual standards so it's in keeping with this new uh new really nice area so i mean the refurbishment of st edith square is is one component of future high street fund um but there are a number of public realm components which will go from st edith square through the middle entry Sort of corridor as I like to call it out the other side behind the town here 
where we'll have a new public square to service the new retail units, um, town centre units that we're building. And it will also wrap around this building here in the town hall and public realm will improve where we were standing earlier on today, actually, um, looking at the Market Street properties and the area by the bridge. So quite a considerable amount um, of public realm within the town centre itself will be refurbished as part of future High Street Fund uh, programme. We don't control, really, because actually it's county council function to uh, maintain, etc., those areas. So in future, um, you know, if, if we want it to the same standard, then it would have to be them who would deliver it. Anyone else with questions? Councillor Turner. Yes, regarding the, the square, uh, am I correct in um, asking that, it, that the TMO allows parking anyway? And if, if so, is that not going to be changed to pro prohibit the parking going forward? It's a TRO, Traffic Regulation Order, of which there are a number that um, apply to the town centre. Uh, my understanding, and I don't know what the current one says, but my understanding is that the County Council are doing a thorough review of Tamworth Town Centre's TROs currently, and that that will come out in due course. But we'll be engaged with that process as well. Any more questions? Councillor Coates. Thank you, Chair. Um, if this application is accepted, I know it says the development should take uh, start within three years of the date of the decision. When would that, you know, when would it likely to be starting if it's accepted? The current projected start on site date, all being well, is the 11th November for site setup, and then I think works proper would get underway within the next couple of weeks after that. Any more questions? Councillor Clark, please. Thank you. I think this is a really exciting development, hopefully. Um, do we still have timescales as we're under a, a scheme, a project as enormous as the one that we are undertaking? Do we have timescales that we have to fulfil on occasions? Um, because it would be nice to try, certainly with outside influences, to get other outside forces to fit in with what you're doing to enhance what you're doing but at no cost to the council but it would please more residents than ever so are there any time scales of which we're going to be trip, tripped up um, in terms of delivering future high street fund um and spending the grant money that we've been awarded um we have to spend that by march of next year st editha square is not funded by the future high streets fund it's um as well, whilst it's part of the fund, it's actually borough council money that we put into that as part of match funding. So technically, no, we, we wouldn't be um, part of that time scale. But obviously, we do want to get it completed as quickly as possible, along with all the other projects, so that we can start to, you know, work within a, a refurbished town centre as quickly as possible. Can I say can thank you to the officer for the explanation there on the two differences? Okay. And I hope pedestrianisation will be um, increased. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Would anyone like to speak on this application? Okay. In that case then, uh, it's recommended that the committee approve this application subject to the conditions set out in the report. I'm looking for a mover. Councillor Smith, uh, Samuel Smith that is, and a seconder please, Councillor Coates. All those in favour? That is unanimous and carried. I'd like to move on to item number five, updates to committee from the planning officers. So I'll hand over once again and finally to Glenn Baker-Adams. Nothing major, well I say major, we've had an appeal decision recently. Um, it's for 210 dwellings off Browns Lane. This application was actually well on the district council's application, so another cross-boundary application where, again, we had a very small part of the site within our Andrews. Again, it was an access that we had. But within literal district council, they had the bulk of the scheme, which was for 210 dwellings. The application was allowed by the inspector. So, again, that has some potential impacts for us as a local area. That appeal decision is available to view. If you log on to the, council web, the planning inspector website, uh, acp.planninginspector.gov.uk or just type into Google planning appeal decisions but that all the decisions there but um, 
obviously full details of that will come out in due course. I'll do a formal report about that probably in time for the next meeting, but just to make you aware that decision has been made. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Foster. Yeah, just a quick question on that. Is uh, Have we um, had any financial impact due to that um, appeal being upheld? No, thankfully no cost award was given, so yeah, no, no, no loss to us in terms okay, of Okay, thank you. Right then, in that case then, thank you for that, Glenn. Um, I'd like to thank all members and those watching at home. That concludes the meeting, business of this meeting, and I close the meeting at 18.30. Have a good evening.